In this workbook, we've recorded our latest 20 scores. We would like to find the average of the 10 best scores. So if this were golf, we would be looking for the lowest scores. If these were student grades, you'd be looking for the highest scores and then averaging those. To find the lowest or the highest, we can use small if we're looking for lowest and we're selecting the range where the scores are and then we want the first smallest score. So we've typed a one in here and we're referring to the cell with the one in it. And the same thing for the large function. We look through the range of scores to find the second largest. To do all of this in one cell though, instead of creating a whole table with values, we can use a formula that finds the average for the small values in this range. And instead of our table where we have one to 10 typed, we can make a reference to rows one to 10. When I enter this formula, I press Control, Shift, Enter, and that automatically puts these curly brackets around the formula to show that it's been array entered. So we get the same result. We can see here 83.3, same as we had by doing it with a table and finding each value individually, and then the average. In this workbook though, things get, can get a little more complicated because if we have 20 scores, we want the top 10 of those. But we have a table, we can see a lookup formula, a VLOOKUP that is finding out how many scores we have, so counting the numbers in this range, going to our lookup table, which is called count LU, and in the second column it's going to find the number of top scores to use. Here's our lookup table and here are the scores and how many top scores to use. So we have 20 scores, we should use the top 10. But if we've only got 11 scores, then we use the top four instead of the top 10. This person had been away for all of these days. Now we've got 11 scores and we should be using the top four instead of the top 10. We need a way to incorporate that top score lookup into our formula. And to create a reference that will change, we can use either the index function starting in A1, and we want to find an index for column A and how many rows will depend on the result of that lookup formula. If we have 10 here, we'd be looking at 10 rows in this reference that we're creating with the index formula. And the other way we could do that is to use indirect, starting in row 1 and going down to row and then using a VLOOKUP to create that last row number. And the indirect function we've set to false, so it uses an R1C1 reference style, and that will create a reference for this row function. And now, if we take out a set of scores, it's going to find the top three scores, because we only have 10, and we get the same result here, whether we use index or indirect. And one advantage to using indirect is if I insert a couple of rows at the top here, the indirect function doesn't change, but the index does because now it's starting at row A3. So it's just something to consider when you're deciding which formula to use.